So IndyCar dropped their 2019 schedule today, and the big announcement was that for the first time since 2014 at Reliant Park in Houston, IndyCar will be racing in a Texan parking lot. Of course, I am talking about Circuit of the Americas, which takes over the second date on the calendar from Phoenix International. I mean, sorry, Jeff Gordon, I mean, I'm sorry. ISM Raceway uh, in Phoenix, Internet, or uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, right behind the traditional uh, season opener in St. Petersburg. So, Circuit of the Americas uh, and their prospects for an IndyCar race. Uh, this was something that was kind of thrown out a few times, and it didn't really seem like it was going to happen. Certainly, the whining and screaming and crying from Eddie Gossage, the threats of we'll take your race away, uh, and that's not even for IndyCar, that's for NASCAR too, with the potential of racing both at Texas Motor Speedway and at Circuit of the Americas. Somehow, they managed to make it work contractually for both tracks to be able to have two races at Texas or in Texas next season. So I may have let on a little bit on Twitter, a bit of a meme. And the, I guess the meme is that I really hate Circuit of the Americas. I wouldn't say I hate it. I wouldn't say I hate it. I would say, I would say in terms of a brand new F1 track, one built in the last 20 years, I'd say it's probably the best one. Now, if you look at the competition, it's up against, you look at Sochi or China or uh, even Azerbaijan, which has produced really good racing. Would you really say that's a really great track layout? I would probably say no. So you look at all the new F1 tracks, Coda's probably the best. That being said, it's still got the downfalls of any of the Herman Tilka era F1 tracks. It's probably too long. It's a bit Mickey Mouse in some sections. And ultimately, it's got way too much runoff. And I'm not the biggest fan of the prospect of an IndyCar race where we're going to have to be discussing track limits as a very serious discussion point because that's what it's going to be. Uh, the, the amount of runoff and the close nature of IndyCar racing will kind of uh, show itself to be a problem, I think, with the what is going to be considered two wheels off the track, what's going to be considered four wheels off the track, what's going to be considered running a little too far off into the pavement, what's going to be considered, you know, you know remember Verstappen uh, passing, I think it was Raikkonen at the end of last year's United States Grand Prix. I bet you we'll see that virtually every lap in the IndyCar race, just based, again, on the nature of of IndyCar racing. That's just the way it is, especially on these road courses. And without the grass and sand and run or, uh, and walls that you have on most traditional uh, United States road courses, uh, this is going to be a very different event. And I just, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about it. I, I, I don't think that it's going to be a bad show because, of course, we've seen all the road course races this year have been pretty excellent from an on-track racing product perspective. But, uh, the track limits are where I'm really kind of worried. Another thing that has just recently come up, and in fact, right before I hit the record button on this video, this came out, is that Circuit of the Americas is actually looking at changing the track for IndyCar. Now, they did it uh, to bring V8 supercars to the circuit around, I think it was like 2013, 2014. That wasn't a very long-lived event, unfortunately, and I think that kind of uh, talks to another problem of Circuit of the Americas, which is outside of the F1 weekends. Uh, they don't really get very good crowds there. The IMSA races were dead. The FIA WEC races were dead. I don't know if anybody showed up the V8 supercars, and I don't know how many people show up to the MotoGP race that's at Circuit of the Americas, though I would expect, since I think it's the last United States Grand Prix, now that the bikes have here, in the states that it probably gets a decent crowd but it's hard to say if you're a bike fan let me know uh, but yeah that did lead to an interesting prospect because there is a good track somewhere in, uh, there in circuit of the americas i think the first sector is absolutely fantastic even if there is a little bit of ripping off of suzuka with the the s curves uh, right after the, the the pretty dramatic and an interesting and unique first corner which is actually probably the most interesting corner on the track is that long uphill. I think uh, Bob Varsha coined it as Phil Hill, which uh, is of course a tribute to the uh, the first American F1 champ. But uh, yeah, I think I think the first sector is really good. I think the last sector is really good. Uh, I do like the really long back straightaway of Coda, 
but there are some problems with the track and they're, they're kind of the Herman Tilke-esque Mickey Mouse sections, if you will. If we look at this uh, version of the track or the current version of the track, uh, you can kind of see that. It's kind of the, the areas between turns 7, 8, and 9 I'm not a fan of and turns uh, 12 through 15, which are really, I think, the kind of bone of contention with most uh, racing folks. I think if you've ever driven this track on a racing sim, uh, you will know that those corners in particular are the ones that are the least fun to drive. It just doesn't feel like, you know, the car is really wanting to respond. It feels like you're just having to, to ask it to do things that it doesn't want to do through those those corners. But again, you look at something like the triple, uh, the triple apex corner that leads up to the final couple of corners. I think it's like a turn 16, 17, 18. That's a fantastic corner. Again, Phil Hill, fantastic corner. The, uh, the S's, fantastic corners. But since Coda is, seems to be willing to make track changes, and I, I'm, I'm really hoping they don't use the short V8 supercars layout. I think that will take away some overtaking opportunities on the long straightaway. So let's put up a, that shot of the of the layout of Circuit of the Americas again. So this is the track as it currently stands. And this is what I would do to it. Uh, these are the changes. So again, I mentioned seven, eight, and nine. Uh, it, it's interesting because they're kind of an extension of the S's, but I have to kind of feel like these corners, uh, for whatever reason, Again, it's kind of just from racing sims. You ca the flow is kind of broken up. It, it really slows down. It almost turns into a chicane. So I've turned that into one single right-hand sweeper. And from it seems like from the kind of aerial shots I've looked at of the track, you would be able to do this without um, changing too much of the track. And I think it would really improve the racing because, again, we'd, we'd see a lot uh, higher speeds going into the right-hander before the very long straightaway. And, uh, again, the, le the less time you have these cars slowing down on the track, I think it'll be good. Then we look at turns 12 to 15. That is, again, a bone of contention. Uh, I think that's the biggest Mickey Mouse section on the track. I've just straightened the whole thing out. I've extended the long back straightaway, uh, probably, I would guess, 500 feet further down the track than it would be, and essentially extended the right-handed corner of turn 12 and brought it straight down into the triple apex corner. Uh, so there's really, I mean, this could be done uh, relatively easily, and I say easily because I'm spending other people's money, but if Circuit of the Americas really wants to turn this racetrack into something that's very racy and very exciting, very fast, a very excellent uh, kind of old school circuit with some of the modern uh, necessities, I guess, required by the FIA and Formula One to get it to a grade one track, I think this is a good compromise. Uh, now, this has been said that the reason they want to change the track for IndyCar is not only to produce a better show, but because they don't want the direct comparison to Formula One. Now, whether that's a Formula One mandate, whether that's an IndyCar mandate, whether that's all the parties involved saying this doesn't do us any good to compare lap times here because, frankly, Formula One has been developing cars for the past 20 years, and, and quite frankly, IndyCar hasn't been. So you've got 20 years of development between F1 cars and Indy cars now at this point, so there's really no logical comparison maybe in the 90s maybe in the 80s there was a there was a reason to put put those cars on the same track and see which one was faster but now it, it's kind of a moot point because you've got a spec series and you've got a non-spec series so but uh yeah that's kind of an interesting thing that they that, that that they're kind of worried about that uh and but again i think it opens the door to really turn coda into kind of one of the badass american tracks like a road america or a or a road atlanta or one of these tracks that just is kind of legendary. Laguna Seca, by the way, that's also returning. Uh, everybody wants me to talk about Laguna Seca. I'm like, what's there to talk about? <laughs> it's kind of like a sidestep from Sonoma. It'll be a slightly better race probably, but uh, it'll be a much more pretty race on TV because of the cars going through the corkscrew. But again, if you think that Laguna Seca is going to put on an amazing, incredible race, I think you've got another thing coming. So that's my thoughts on Coda uh, coming to IndyCar next year. It's probably... You know, I'm happy for you. If you're happy, it's back. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but, you know, I'm sure you'll let me know that or how I already have in the comments. Uh, and certainly, I'd love to hear the discussion. So subscribe, 
like the video. Going to be doing more IndyCar and motorsport content coming up very soon. And we'll see you in the next video.